Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. Hi, I'm Katie Lee. I'm a voice actress. Um, I've worked on a lot of animated shows, especially in the 80s, or the ones that are most famous, Darkwing Duck, Gummy Bears, Muppet Babies. Uh, I worked on Totally Spies. I've done a lot of ADR post-production on movies. I was the voice of the Maharaja in Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Good student who talked too much. So I'd find something that could use my brains and my voice at the same time. Now I did some improv. I sound young, so there was a market for people with my kind of voice back in the 80s. And I, I made a demo. I found an agent in LA who wanted to take me on and I started auditioning and I was successful at it. So that was the good news. I always had an interest, but more as a, a fan. I guess, you know, like most people watch TV. I imitated people that I liked. Um, I didn't think I would actually work in the industry growing up because I grew up in Los Angeles and it seemed like everybody was in the industry. So it seemed like the, I want to do what other people aren't doing. Or also I, I knew chances of being successful weren't that great. But I think about uh, voiceover. You know, I was a little too short in theater in school. I didn't like being on stage. I like being invisible. Well, I, I, I'm not sure which came first, but I, um, a newscaster I met introduced me to a radio producer who called me in to do some lines for a radio spot. Um, just out of the, you know that wanted to try me out and I, I, I don't think I did very well but years later when I actually went into voiceover and moved back to LA I used to work for him a lot I did that and then uh, Mel Blank who many people know had a, has a son named Noel who my stepmother knew because she worked at the hair salon that he went to and she told him that I did voiceover I guess and he was making a film for the Shriners Burn Institute, and he needed the voice of a little girl screaming for being scalded in the bathtub, and he had me come over and record that. So that was probably the first job I ever did that got used, as far as I know. I like dubbing because it's such a challenge uh, when you do it well and it looks good it just feels really good um, so I like doing that dubbing um, for the challenge of it I like working in animation because I like working with the other actors that's fun uh, dubbing isn't you know usually you're by yourself unless you're in a group doing post-production so yeah I like I like doing cartoons because of other people and of course I've worked on a radio show I forgot to mention called Adventures in Odyssey for the last 33 years almost playing Connie Kendall so that's been a big part of my life and I love I love playing that character and working with all those people they mean a lot to me so I don't know I mean I like educational stuff because it's fun I'm kind of very juvenile type personality so I love doing preschool stuff because it's you know it's so fun to teach teach kids how to talk and think and about the world to me and you always learn stuff when you do educational things so I guess I don't have a favorite to answer your question every the different things I like to do at for different reasons Of course, uh, you know, I worked the Adventures of the Gummy Bears was Disney Saturday morning um, TV show to be uh, aired. And I worked on that. I was Sunny Gummy. Darkwing Duck was a Disney show for the Disney Channel. Um, Dumbo Circus. I was the voice of Dumbo for Dumbo Circus, which was an animatronic show they had on the Disney Channel. So I'm the only person who ever voiced Dumbo of every episode I say well that's our show for today boys and girls I hope you liked it <laughs> a 
because I didn't really, there's a lot of great coaches out there, you know, and everybody's different. So I had to sort of wrestle with the fact, because I, I felt a lot of responsibilities. So when someone asked me for help, I, I didn't know what that meant, but understand that, you know, I can share my experience. I can share what I know and you'll get something from me that you won't get from somebody else. So I don't have to feel like a hundred percent responsible for somebody's career. And I have a lot of fun. And when I started coaching, when I do my group classes, we have fun and people have given me really pop back, which made me continue. Call you up and say you got the job. I mean, it's just, it's always nice to hear that you got hired. You know, most of our work is auditioning and sitting around with our fingers crossed and hoping somebody, you know, so when you actually book a job, that's the, that exciting little moment that everybody who needs affirmation on a daily basis lives for. <laughs> so um, I think that's, that's really what I love about my own career path is that I was able to raise my kids and be home and go to their, most of their stuff and, you know, still work. Back when I started, you could do this kind of part-time and make a full-time living. It's not really that way anymore. It's a lot more work than it was when I started in the 80s. So, um, you know, I, but you still have flexibility. You still can, you know, work around your family. And, and that's important to me. You know, I, I wanted to be available for my kids and do things in their classroom. And I think this career afforded me to do that, the opportunity and, and make a decent amount of money at the same time. The other stuff was kind of extra, you know, watching it on TV is always fun when it finally comes out. It's always, you know, way later than you ever recorded it. So, and there's movies I've worked on. I've never seen that. I keep thinking, gee, I'm getting a residual for this film. I really want to see it. I never saw the whole thing. I only saw bits and pieces when I was working on it. So it's fun. To, it's fun to watch, especially cartoons. You want to see how the cartoons come out, how they get animated and what your character really looks like. And, and then once you see them, it helps you. So if you get picked up for a second season, it kind of helps you to think, oh, how am I going to, you know, characters usually evolve. The first two, three episodes are usually not the way they end up down the line because people are sort of feeling them out and feeling up, you know, feeling out their relationship with the other characters on the show. So it's always evolving, but it is fun. We used to have watch parties because when our shows would come out Saturday mornings, you know, in September when school started, we all want to get our DVRs out and watch what we've been working on all year. That, that was, used to be exciting. Now the schedules are all over the place and everything's on all the time. So it's, it's not, you don't have seasons like we used to have, but I love to see my, stuff I found out that there's some shows there's a show I directed called Chi Chi Love and no one told me that it was out on YouTube Kids so I got to see that and it's fun to how it comes out uh, I'm doing a voice Super Zach today I'm working on something called Time Traveler Luke which is amazing looking and I'm doing Luke's voice um, it's from Korea but it looks steampunk so all the animation is you know it's a steampunk type deal and it looks really cool so it's fun to see what it looks like um, when it's all put together. I guess the, I like a lot of things. <laughs> uh, read out loud. Read aloud. Read kids' books to kids. If they're falling asleep, you probably aren't cut out. <laughs> to do animation <laughs> you know there's so many character when you read kids books there's always character voices so that's a good chance to to try those out listen you know that's the other thing watch watch shows that are already on see how what the energy is like you can educate yourself for free in this business and d bradley baker has a website called i want to be a voice actor.com with a lot of good advice for people there's so much free stuff now with the internet you can study your brains out i mean there's a conference going on right now that i'm missing talking to you i hope i make the time to go watch the replays cuz it's a it, from england one voice conference and you can learn all about different things so take advantage of what's available to 
you. And don't think just because you're not in LA that you can't do this. Um, the industry has evolved. If you have a decent microphone and a decent space and the wherewithal and the you know interest, you can make a career in voiceover. Thank you for watching The Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.